hurricane season officially starts June 1st. Kenner officials have spent the past year training, upgrading equipment and facilities, and preparing for a storm that we all hope never arrives. Now is the time for residents to make specific plans on what to do if a tropical system heads this way. This program will take a look at the ways in which Kenner is better prepared than ever before and offer specific tips and advice for residents to protect their families and their homes. We all know it's impossible to predict when the next big storm will impact our area. That's why we are constantly training, revising our plan as necessary, and upgrading or adding new equipment and supplies. This building has been fortified, making it safer for the many employees who will be assigned here in the event of an approaching tropical system. In fact, more than 400 employees will be on duty. That includes our emergency providers from both the police department and the fire department. So when a hurricane is headed in our direction, the top city officials, including uh, Mayor Zahn, will come to the EOC here and will set up a command center. And uh, from there, they'll direct the other city, uh, other city departments on what to do. Continuing to add to the safety and emergency equipment in the EOC has been a priority. Not only is the EOC the decision-making headquarters during a storm, it also serves as sleeping and living quarters for many employees. Even if a mandatory evacuation is called, Kenner police cannot make any resident leave the city. However, whether the evacuation is voluntary or mandatory, it's important to think about this very important decision now and how it will affect you and your family. Any storm that's predicted to hit the South Louisiana coast, uh, you should make plans to evacuate now, even if it's a minor storm. As we've seen in past, for example, Hurricane Isaac was a category one storm that came through the Metro New Orleans area and left some residents of Canada without power for up to seven days. If the winds get above a certain level, some of the emergency services here in Kenner might be affected. For example, ambulances and fire trucks, being that they're large and boxy in nature, can't really get out in, in high winds. Uh, police officers, we have a little more f uh, freedom, when, it, but uh, don't rely on emergency services. When the winds get up, you may not have any of us uh, responding. Preparing your home for a storm involves removing potential hazards from your property and having the proper emergency supplies available. Emergency officials recommend taking these steps to protect your home, whether you evacuate or not. Get plywood pre-cut to fit your doors or windows or use permanent storm shutters. Move lawn furniture, gardening tools, trash cans, and other outside objects to a place protected from high winds. Clean out loose and clogged rain gutters and downspouts and secure any loose gutters. Trim or remove damaged trees and limbs to protect from storm winds. Purchase a portable generator or install a fixed generator if you can. For water, one gallon of water per person per day for at least three days for drinking and sanitation. Food, at least a three-day supply of non-perishable food battery-powered or hand crank radio, and a NOAA weather radio with tone alert and extra batteries for both. Flashlight and extra batteries. First aid kit. Whistle to signal for help. Dust mask to help filter contaminated air and plastic sheeting and duct tape to shelter in place. Moist towelettes, garbage bags, and plastic ties for personal sanitation a wrench or pliers to turn off utilities, a manual can opener for food, local maps, and cell phone with chargers, inverter or solar charger. Portable generators can make life during a power outage much less stressful and uncomfortable. However, it's very important to choose a generator that produces more amps than you need for the appliances and devices you want to use. And remember that the number of appliances you can operate with a generator will be limited. Further information is available from stores that sell generators and from online sources such as the Red Cross. Generator safety issues are all too common, in part because homeowners rarely operate their portable generators. Follow these safety tips for using a generator at home.
Operate your unit on a dry surface under a tarp or other structure to protect it from rain. Never use a generator indoors or in partially enclosed areas, even with ventilation. This includes garages, basements, and crawl spaces. Follow the instructions that come with your generator. Opening doors and windows or using fans is not sufficient protection from potential carbon monoxide poisoning in your home. Turn the generator off and let it cool down before refueling. Never store fuel for your generator in the home or near a fuel burning appliance such as a natural gas water heater. Store fuel in an approved safety can and keep it outside living areas and protected. The generator should be sized for the expected load. For example, a 3 kilowatt generator produces 3000 watts. This would be enough to power a 1200 watt hair dryer and a 1600 watt toaster with some power left over for a few lights. You should plan for additional needs when sizing the generator. Create an individual or family emergency plan now and revisit that plan before every hurricane season. Things can get very hectic when a storm is headed our way. That's not the time to create an evacuation plan from scratch. A family emergency plan should include a location for everyone that's part of the evacuation to meet to begin the trip out of town. What to do with any pets? We'll talk more about a pet emergency plan soon. A family disaster supply kit. Create this kit now so that you can quickly and easily bring it with you. Details of where you will go. Head inland far enough so that if the storm heads your way after making landfall, it will have weakened considerably. Contact information to reserve a hotel. You can look through a list of lodgings now using AAA or some other resource. Create a list of a few possibilities so all you have to do is call to find out which hotels have rooms. Contraflow is the realignment of interstate traffic designed to maximize evacuation in the event of an approaching tropical system. Contraflow is divided into three categories with residents closer to the coast given the go-ahead first to begin evacuating. When ordered by the governor, both eastbound and westbound I-10 lanes from Clearview Parkway to I-55 North and Laplace are used as westbound only lanes. Create a pet emergency supply kit if you are evacuating. This kit should include the following items. A traveling bag or crate. Carriers are ideal for each pet. Pet first aid supplies. Ask your vet what to include. At least three days and up to seven days of canned food. Look for pop top lids or dry food. Disposable litter trays for cats. Litter or plenty of paper towels. Liquid dish soap and disinfectant. Pet feeding dishes copies of medical records, and a waterproof container with a two-week supply of any medicines your pet takes. Don't forget bottled water for your pets as well as your family members. Recent photos of your pets in the event you become separated. For birds, reptiles, and other animals, be certain you've considered their needs and have talked to your vet about necessary supplies such as carriers or cages. Animal officials have estimated as many as 600,000 animals were stranded following Hurricane Katrina. For many pet owners who found themselves out of town and separated from their pets, it was a horrifying experience. A little planning now can mean peace of mind during an emergency. Kenner works closely with Jefferson Parish and its emergency management department during an emergency, and there are several free parish programs available to Kenner residents. JP Alert makes it possible for parish officials to send out alerts to residents during an emergency. This real-time alert system sends out specific instructions on things like evacuation notices, location of emergency shelters, and road shutdowns. You can choose whether to receive alerts on your cell phone, an email account, or some other handheld device. To register, go to jpalert.com. If you own or operate a business in Kenner, and your company evacuates during a tropical event, you will need a re-entry placard for you and your employees to return following the storm. Jefferson Parish has a re-entry system called Jumpstart Jefferson, and all businesses should register for re-entry now. If you or a loved one needs assistance in evacuating in the event of a storm, Jefferson Parish offers emergency transportation for residents. 
Bus stops for special needs individuals would be announced by the parish during a storm event. In some cases, Jefferson Transit buses will pick up residents unable to make it to one of the parish bus stops, but registration is necessary. Preparation is the key to handling an emergency such as a hurricane, and we urge our residents to follow the tips presented in this program in order to be prepared for whatever this hurricane season brings. For everyone's safety, we will make sure Kenna is prepared and ask that you do the same.